Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started. And um, today's session is all about Kaltura Capture. Um, so most of the session will be done in demo mode, sort of like yesterday, so we can show you the things uh, we think you need to know about using Kaltura Capture. And I do just have a few slides that I want to run through before we um, start the demo part of the session. Just a reminder uh, who we are. It, Quayley and John, it's the Quayley and John show for the second day in a row. Um, and our contact information is there. The important thing that I guess I just want to stress on this screen is just a reminder that as questions come up as you are using Kaltura and, and learning how to embed content and capture content, if you run into issues or you have questions, we really recommend that you head over to the help desk and submit those tickets there, A, so we can track them, B, so that we can route them to the right folks, because it's not always going to be us that might need to handle that ticket. It might need to be the guys in media services and OIT, so it, it's best to start with a help desk ticket instead of a direct email to either John or I. Okay. So what we're going to cover today, just as really basic, what is Kaltura Capture? We're going to talk really briefly about um, the features and then spend most of the time on the demo to show you how you use Kaltura Capture to do um, your recording needs. So Kaltura Capture is the desktop recorder product that comes with Kaltura. So we, we got Kaltura and it comes with multiple products as John explained yesterday. And Kaltura Cop Capture is the desktop recorder product that comes with Kaltura. And that is going to be very similar to um, things like Screencast-O-Matic or other screen recorders that you may have used um, in the past. What's nice about Kaltura Capture is because it's a part of Kaltura, we've got it nicely integrated into Canvas. So it kind of eliminates some of those extra steps that you would have to follow when you use those third party recorders. You no longer have to save it separately and then upload it to Illumira to share. Because you're recording with Capture, there really is a seamless process to upload the content after it's been recorded right into your My Media repository in Kaltura, which is also integrated in Canvas, so it makes it very easy for you to share that content with your students. It is supported for use on both Windows and Mac, so it's not a, a product that you can only use if you're Mac or only use if you're Windows. Um, and screen and web capture, one click. Honestly, it's one click. You, you start Kaltura Capture and you hit a record button and you're recording your screen, your camera, or just your audio, whatever it is that you need um, recorded. One other really nice feature about Kaltura Capture is if you're interested in narrating your PowerPoints and recording those, it does automatic slide detection, creates chapters out of those slides, which means you get a searchable index. So when students are viewing that video, they can type in a keyword and search, um, and it would take them right to that chapter or right to that slide in the video. So it helps them kind of narrow in on content that they're looking for, or maybe would like to view again without having to watch at the entire um, recording through. Okay, just a reminder that in order for us to use this wonderful new Kaltura product and all of its new features, we have a new URL for Canvas, and that is canvas.rider.edu. Um, in the past, when you've accessed Canvas, like John mentioned yesterday, you went to rider.instructure.com. That's what we told you, so that's what you did. Now we're saying we need you to go to canvas.rider.edu um, so that you can have access without issues to Kaltura and the tools and the products as they are integrated right now. Eventually, there will be a redirect in place so that if you forget and head over to rider.instructure.com, it will redirect you to the new URL automatically. But for now, you need to remember to go directly to canvas.rider.edu. So kind of what we're going to cover um, in the demo is the cover the fact that Kaltura Capture does require an installation. I'm not going to demo the installation. I will show you where there is a video available where you can watch um, step by step and installation there. We'll talk about the different recording options that are available to you when you're using Capture. We'll do a brief recording demo 
cover how you save and upload, and then end up with um, some general recording recommendations and hopefully leave enough time to answer questions if you have them. So before we get started, is there anything we need to address? Are we good? We're good. Okay. So just as a recap, John talked about this a little bit yesterday, but when you're integrating Kaltura in Canvas, it gives you two kind of places where content can live. One is called My Media and the other is called Media Gallery. We have hidden by default the Media Gallery option and what everyone will see when they log into Canvas is their My Media. And really the difference between the two is My Media is a repository for all of the content that you're gonna upload to Kaltura. It's not course specific. It's tied to your account. So therefore it's available to you in every course that you have access to. The content that you're adding to my media is private by default. So students don't have access to it once it's been uploaded automatically. It needs to be shared with them or published to the media gallery to allow for them to see that. The media gallery is course specific. So that repository is specifically media that is available for a specific course. Once content has been published to the media gallery or added to the media gallery, any student, any user in your Canvas course will be able to see that content. Um, as we mentioned yesterday, this is where our writer library for more library from Talbot library, that's where you're going to find that content. So if you've submitted streaming media requests to the library and they've shared content with you, it will appear in your media gallery for you to be able to embed into pages and share with students. Okay, and I'm going to, Stop sharing the PowerPoint and start the demo of Kaltura Capture. Do you recommend that we play along? That's up to you. You can if you'd like. Um, we are, ho oh, ho, oh, thank you. Who clicked recording? Because I absolutely forgot that. Thanks. I got you. No worries. <laughs> we will record this so that, you know, and share this afterwards so you can watch it later and click along later or if you just want to pay attention now, but it's up to you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my Canvas screen. And the first step in using Kaltura Capture is to install it. So again, I'm in Canvas. I'm going to look for the My Media link in my course menu on the left-hand side of the screen. Once that screen loads, you are usually going to head over to this Add New because you want to add new content. But we're not adding content that is already exists. We want to record something, whether that's a demo of our screen. We want to show some step by step instructions to students, whether that's narrating a PowerPoint, whether that is just recording some audio. We're going to use Kaltura Capture. Once you click Kaltura Capture, for me, it's going to actually launch the recorder, but I'm just going to close that really quickly. You will see this screen. If you haven't already installed it, you want to either download for Windows or download for the Mac. Once you have downloaded the version you need, you want to go ahead and follow um, the installation steps that you need to follow. I did mention that in our media space under TLC Media, we have a Kaltura tutorials area. John, if you could share the media space link in the chat for everybody. And you're going to look for the Kaltura Capture how to download and install video. So if you want some help walking through the steps for how to install and, and just watching to see certain settings that you need to enable and allow, you can find that information in that um, tutorial video that's been posted there in our media space area. So that's the first step. You want to download and get that installed. Once you have it installed, again, you're just going to come back into Canvas go to my media, select Kaltura Capture from the Add New menu. And once it's installed, it launches automatically. So what you're looking at on my screen, do you see that, John, or no? OK. No, I'm looking at Canvas. I'll do desktop then. Yeah. We're good. OK. So what you should see after you launch Kaltura Capture is this recording tool 
menu of options that's available to you. The very first button you see is that red circle. That's your recording button. So as simple as I'm ready to record, I hit that button, it starts recording what I've selected um, from the input options that you see here to the right. So when you're selecting what you want to record, Kaltura gives you three options. You can record screen, you can record camera, you can record audio, and you can do any combination of those that you desire. For selecting the inputs for screen, you'll notice that there is a little arrow pointing up to the right of the screen icon. It allows you to select from any screen that is available to you. If you have multiple screens, you can choose between the screens listed in the drop down. And when you're selecting screen, you can choose to record either in full screen or you can customize and select a specific area. So if you only want to record a part of your screen, you can do that as well. I will briefly turn my camera on, but it will expose me and my bedroom. So I'm going to turn that off pretty quickly. But when you select camera again, it will allow you to choose from any cameras that you are connected to. If you have multiple cameras, you can select the desired camera from the drop down list. I'm going to turn that back off. And then you have audio. So again, the arrow allows you to choose from multiple sources that are available to you on your particular setup. So again, if we want to record just the screen and the audio, we can turn the camera off. If I am recording maybe a welcome video, I want to record just my camera and the audio, I can turn the screen off. And I can turn both screen and camera off and just record audio if I wanted to do a podcast or some sort of just audio only recording that I want to share with my students. So again, the red button allows us to record. The icons to the right of that record button allow you to choose whether you're, what combination of inputs you're recording, screen, camera, or audio. And then on the right hand side, you have the minimize button. So if you want to minimize the capture menu while recording, you can do so manually by clicking that minimize icon. Clicking Kaltura capture again in the right hand corner will bring it back up. The X that's in the top right corner will close Kaltura capture. And then we have the ability to get to our manage settings here by clicking the manage link. When I click manage, you have the access to these management settings here. There's a library tab, there's a settings tab, and then there's an information tab. On your library tab, you're going to see any of the recordings that you've created. So when you create a recording, it will store it first here in your library on your computer. And this is where it stays after it's been uploaded for future reference. So from your library screen, you can upload directly to your Kaltura My Media space. You can delete a recording. So if it's no longer needed here on your desktop because you've already uploaded it or it's a recording that you no longer need, you can delete it from the library. As I scroll down, you can tell which have been uploaded because if it's already been uploaded to My, My Media area in Kaltura, I actually have a link that will display here that will allow me to access that media content in your My Media Collection in Kaltura. You also see a re-upload instead of just a regular upload. Clicking on a particular recording link takes you into the Edit Recording Details page. And on this page, I can play back a video. I can change the title of a recording. I can give it a description. I could also put those tags. John mentioned tags yesterday. So if this is training, if this is how to, if this is, I can add those tags directly here on this screen and it will add it automatically. At the bottom of the screen, I have the option to delete a recording here as well, save it as well as save and upload. If I save, it just saves the changes and leaves it in the library. If I do save and upload, it will upload it to our Canvas My Media. If I select the settings tab, it allows me to go in and make changes to the recording quality for both the camera and the screen. So it, by default, it will select 
the option that is optimal for your computer, but if you want to make changes to what has been set as the default, it can. You are able to toggle and select different options. So again, you can choose that for your camera recording quality as well as for your screen recording quality. On Windows machines only, you will see a third option here, which is for enable or disable audio system recording. You don't have that option if you're a Mac user, so it doesn't show up here on my screen, but if you are a Windows uh, PC person, you will see that third option available here. You also have the ability to set a default name prefix that will be added to all of the recordings that are created here. So if you wanted to change it from this Kaltura Capture Recording default, you can. If you want to use the highlight cursor feature while recording, you can toggle that on by selecting yes. And if you want to auto minimize the recording tool interface when you're recording so that it does not appear as a part of your recording, you can set that to yes. The default is that it's no. So if you want to auto minimize that so you don't have to remember to minimize when recording, you just want to toggle that on to yes. If you make any changes to the settings here, you just want to make sure you hit save. If you haven't and you want to just get out of the screen, you just hit cancel. Okay, if I go back into manage, the last thing I want to point out is that you can start a new recording right from that management screen by clicking that new recording button. Any questions about the options that we showed here? John's been banging away at people's <laughs> yeah, questions. He's, uh, he's awesome. Uh, you might, John was going to check on a question. John, do you think she, uh, Quelly would know? Uh, and I'll, I'll just pose it for everybody. Sure, uh, yeah. I, I currently have, I've used Screencast-O-Matic and Zoom to record um, video lectures that will also show um, some embedded video with audio. So it's basically, uh, my question is, will Kaltura uh, capture when you're recording the screen, also record the audio that's associated with that screen. So definitely if you're on a Windows machine, because that's what that enable system audio setting is for. So it will capture whatever the embedded audio is in that recording. I'm not positive about the Mac. We have to test that and see if that's something it'll capture on its own without needing that setting because it's not available for the Mac. But yes, if you're a, a Windows user, I'm not sure about the, the Mac. Great, thank you. You're welcome. A couple of questions we've gotten um, with regards to when it's first, when you're first using it, it will go to the cloud eventually, but it's going to put that local file on your computer. And the reason for that is uh, well, twofold. Twofold. One, if you were in the event you're to lose internet connection, you don't want to lose all the work that you did. And two, your computer, for the most part, will never be able to handle uploading all of that huge file size in real time. At that point, you're actually doing a live stream, um, and that's an entirely different type of piece of software. There was a follow-up to that as well. I don't have that much storage on my computer. How long do they stay there? And I'm actually looking at that right now. Um, so let me get back to you guys on, on how that works and, and remedies. We can how long it stays through. in your library? Yeah. Oh, it stays in the library until you delete it. See, but I don't, I don't see these files in my, when we've been testing it. That's what I thought. Yeah. So I would say if you're concerned about space, once you've uploaded it to Kaltura, go ahead and delete it from the library because you don't need it in both places. Because once you've successfully moved it into Kaltura, you, you would be able to download it and access it if you needed it for other purposes outside of Kaltura. But I would go ahead and delete it if you're concerned about space on your personal computer. You could have it in your Google Drive, though, right? And delete it from... You could. Okay. Absolutely. And that's definitely something we would be recommending. And this kind of falls into the bucket, too we will, these are good question to, questions to ask us because we need to learn the answers to them. But until we really start getting into this with you guys, we, we don't even know what to look for yet. So, so thank you for your patience on some of this, because this is probably how towards the capture is going to be one of the harder things that take us, take, take us longer to really kind of know like the back of our hand. I'll just chip this one in too. I've also been saving my uh, video files onto the external hard drive, yeah. so, so that if anything ever went wrong in any way, 
are on, on the canvas. Up. You've got them as a, yeah, you've got the peace of mind of knowing that they're, they're retrievable directly in your office yep. without needing to rely on anything inside the computer <laughs> to find them. So I, I throw that in there. Thank you. Okay. So what I will do now is we're going to talk about actually recording. So we've installed Capture, we've launched Capture, we've talked about what these different buttons are. Now we want to go ahead and record something. So as I mentioned before, you can do lots of different um, combinations. And what's really cool is you can do two screens or two cameras. So if, as Do John mentioned yesterday, he was saying, what if you have a document camera plugged in or what if you have your iPad plugged in and you want to share what's going on on the iPad as, long, as well as maybe some PowerPoint slides you have on your screen, Kaltura will allow you to select multiple screen inputs or multiple camera inputs. It, it allows you to do that. So if you're recording from your camera, but you also want to capture the iPad from the screen drop down, you would select the iPad as the additional input. And then that would switch that icon to a second camera and capture both cameras for you. So you have a lot of flexibility on the combination of the inputs that you're choosing. But for this simple demo, I'm just gonna do screen. And I actually am gonna say select area. What you should see is this kind of light square that appears with dashed lines around it. And I can use the arrows to customize where this is going to capture on my screen. So I can set it as wide or as short or small as, as I wanted. Once you set the area that you want to be captured, you simply click confirm. If I want to make sure it's not also capturing my camera, I turn that off, make sure it's capturing audio. And then the next step is simply to click that record button. Once I click record, it's going to give me a countdown similar to other products that you might have used before. I have auto minimize set, so it automatically minimizes the options down to the tray at the bottom right of my screen. And then I can just simply click and you see it's highlighting my cursor as I click and it's actually recording everything that I'm doing on my screen right now, as well as capturing my audio. When I want to maybe pause the recording, I simply go back to my controls here. And in this control bar, I have a stop recording button. I also have a pause recording button. So I can click pause and it will temporarily stop the recording. If I want to resume the recording again, I simply click the red button and it picks right back up from where we left off. The X will cancel the recording completely. And then we have here the elapsed time. So it lets me know how long I've been recording so far, how long is the recording at this point. The microphone icon that you see lets you see the audio um, input. And then what we have here is this little pencil icon gives us access to something else that's really cool. So I'm going to resume the recording again. I'm going to click that pencil. It gives us access to annotations that are available to us in Kaltura. So you can annotate when you're recording from the screen. I can choose pencil. I think, Wendy, this might even be your video. I don't know why it's showing up in my media gallery, but that's Wendy's video. That's the and one I was looking for yesterday. <laughs> we'll have to talk to this them about that offline. You to test things with us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But you can annotate on the screen as you're recording, and those annotations will be captured in the recording when it's complete. So when I'm in this pencil, I can choose the different color and choose also the size, how fine I want that to be. You can choose an arrow. So if I wanna draw an arrow, I can. There's also the text option. So it gives me a text box and I can type on the screen as well. If I click clear, it gets rid of all of those annotations for me. There's also a little whiteboard. So if you click that whiteboard, it actually gives you a whiteboard that comes up that you can actually annotate on instead of the screen that we were annotating on before. And again, this is all captured in the recording. If I'm going to say I'm done, I wanna stop this recording. 
you are eventually going to see, and I'm gonna be patient. A pop-up that says, are you sure you wanna stop this recording? If I'm not done, you say no, it lets you go back and record. But if you are, you just simply click yes, stop it. And it takes us back to this edit detail screen that we saw before. And this is where I can edit the title. I can give a description if I want. I can also tag, like we said before. And then we have options. Remember, if we save, it just saves it to the library. But if I say save and upload, it's letting me know that the upload is pending. And now I have my status bar letting me know how much time is left on the upload of this video. And what it is doing is taking this video and adding it directly to the My Media space that's available to me and my account in Kaltura. Any questions about that whole process while we wait for that kind of to finish processing? Good question from Jamie and JJ on something we don't we didn't look at yet, but I'm very curious if once you so you're you're recording, you pause, pull up the whiteboard, annotate, and then resume the recording if everything basically just appears. And I do I do want to say yes, because that, no, we tested it. If you're paused, that whiteboard is not included in the recording. But then when you resume, does everything appear automatically? It should in the If workflow. the whiteboard is still open, yes. yes. And whatever you've done that's on the whiteboard will be captured in the recording, yeah. Cool. Okay, so you'll notice the recording is the upload, I'm sorry, is complete. It gives me a link that lets me know it's up in that space for me in Kaltura. And I have the option to re upload. One thing I wanted to mention if I go back to that details page for this particular recording, I can no longer edit the tags or the description or the title because it's been uploaded to um, Kaltura. You can do that editing on the My Media System side in Kaltura in Canvas if you need to make those changes, but it won't allow you to do it from this screen in Kaltura Capture. Okay, I'm going to go back and we're going to talk about PowerPoint and how you record PowerPoint um, with Kaltura. So one of the things that you want to keep in mind when you're doing the PowerPoint recording is that it requires that the sh it's being done in, in show mode and it has to be full screen. So what you want to do, and that's how it captures the slides and, and saves them as images and makes those images different chapters so that it becomes an indexable search. You can search um, these things on the student side of things when you're watching it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you have your PowerPoint. So here's my PowerPoint. I'm going to go back to my Kaltura setting. I want to make sure it's set to screen. If you also wanted to include yourself talking, your face, John and I kind of had a little philosophical argument about this the other day. <laughs> but if you wanted to also include your talking head along with the slides that you're narrating, you could turn your camera on and it will capture both you and the slides. Um, whether you do that, we disagree. Yeah. Keep it on. I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna comment, but he's not. Okay. So you make sure it's set to screen. When I go ahead, and I'm gonna just move this down a little. I'm gonna go ahead and start the recording. I am going to click on my PowerPoint, make sure I'm in full screen, and then I'm going to make sure I go into show mode. And this is how you want to record your narrations. You want to be full screen. You want to be in slideshow mode because otherwise it does not do that automatic slide identifying as chapters so that the benefit that we're looking for will be lost if you don't record it in this way using Kaltura. So, so really, you can, I, I want to ahead. just echo something that Crayley said, Mac folks on the call today, this is something special for you as well that we, Crayley and I noticed through testing when you open up PowerPoint, before you go into presentation mode, 
click on that green dot in the top left hand corner and go into full screen mode so it takes over everything and you lose the bottom dock i know that that sounds ridiculous but you have to do that be first and then go into slide share mode slideshow mode i don't know why i said share sorry questions about that i know that's a little confusing but i i found that there were the gotchas when we were testing this because if you're not in full screen and in slideshow mode a if you're not in full screen it captures the little recording interface at the bottom of the video and you don't want that you don't want them to see the pause the stop the you just want them to see the slides so you have to make sure you're in full screen if you're not in slideshow mode you don't get the automatic detection of the slides you don't get the chapter creations when it uploads to kaltura for you and then students don't have the ability to search uh, using text-based search when they're viewing the video the, uh, the rest of the process as it relates to PowerPoint slides is exactly the same. Once your recording is stopped, it brings you to the edit detail page. You can again, put the title, the description, your tags, save it to your library only, or go ahead and save and upload to Kaltura. Questions about that? That one was a little um, tricky, especially for a Mac user, because you just had to remember to do those kind of extra clicks and steps to make sure the PowerPoint was um, set up properly. And just to be clear, for Windows users as well, you still have to go into presentation mode. So where it does full screen, you just don't have to do that, that, that weird Mac thing where you have to take over the screen, lose yeah. the docking station, and then yeah. go into things. If you ever want to delete a recording, it will ask you. So it will never just blow it away without asking you again, are you sure you want to do this? If you are sure you want to delete, you simply say yes, delete. And it rec removes that recording from the library in your computer. Okay, I'm going to close that. I'm just going to go back to my media. And just at this point, John, the last thing that we wanted to talk about really were the recording recommendations. Um, Kaltura Capture is pretty easy to use. Once you've got it installed, you've played with it a couple of times, you'll see that um, really is simply one click recording for you and one click uploading for you to Canvas. But in terms of other recommendations that we can make for you is related to your environment when you're recording. And we want to say choose a space that's quiet so you're not surrounded by distractions. It's not picking up background noise um, in the recording. Something that I did in preparation for these sessions, clean up my browser at my desktop. I had a million things all over my desktop that I did not want captured when I was sharing my screen and, and doing recordings. Also, you want to close any apps, especially those that notify you, because you don't want notifications popping up in the middle of your narration of your slides. If you're set up to get notifications, iMessage notifications or news notifications, you don't want those popping up on screen in the middle of your recording. Same thing, turn off anything that makes noise so you don't get the weird beeps and, and sounds from those notifications in the background of the recording. Um, I'm not using a USB headset microphone right now. The audio quality is pretty good, but if you want to make sure you've got really excellent um, audio quality, you may want to invest in a USB headset microphone. Um, I don't know, John, do we have recommendations? Is there a page we can send them? I didn't think to even check if OIT has that up. I'm not sure but, if they have that up, um, but I'm sure submitting a ticket, usually they can send back some of that stuff as well. Yeah, to at least give you some recommendations maybe for brands or, or products. They, they have some pretty good ones out there that aren't really um, expensive or, or prohibitively priced, I'll say. Um, while it's not, necessarily required to prepare a script is recommended. If you have a script, it keeps you on track. You, it, you, you're left with less ums and ahs or fillers because you kind of have 
a sequence that you know you're following it also kind of helps you to keep from forgetting something so if you have a script and you're keeping an eye on that script you're not missing a step or missing something that you wanted to include in that recording because you've got a, a handy set of notes right there that you can follow um we can never stress this enough keep the screencast or the recording short <coughs> excuse me 10 to 15 minutes tops practice those screencasts, practice those scripts, practice those recordings, and then do a test recording. Excuse me, I'm gonna... The thing with the test recording is especially important the first time you download Kaltura Capture. Um, again, I'm gonna pick on all the Mac folks. Apple has made it incredibly complicated and annoying in the name of privacy, so they claim, um, to make sure that your, your computer has the right permissions enabled. And so Kaltura does a pretty good job in walking you through that process to make sure that you are enabling Kaltura Capture to be able to record your screen. You're enabling it to have access to your microphone as well as access to your webcam. However, if you were to somehow miss one of those steps or you think settings took, you think you saved something and it didn't, didn't go, you know, we don't want you to go 15 minutes into a lecture and then realize that it actually requited nothing, um, which can happen. I'm not saying it can't happen on Windows either. That's why we really want you to do a test on that as well. But definitely, 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 if you are running Mac OS, you need to do a test. Yeah, absolutely. A short 30 second, 45 second, make sure it's recording what you think it's recording. Do a quick playback and make sure it's good and then go ahead and start your recording for real. When you're done, review the recording in its entirety. Make sure it's recorded everything you thought it recorded and make sure nothing got included that should not be. <coughs> Excuse me. Lighting. It should be in front of you, not behind you. <coughs> give it a try. Give it a test. I'm sorry. I'm having issues here, John. The main reason for that, and you've probably noticed this since we've all been on Zoom for how long now, don't have a window behind you because um, then people can't see you. And I know that that's not necessarily, you know, at this point, I know folks are just trying to find a room in their house where their kids and dog and cat aren't, aren't barging in. So not necessarily always the most practical recommendation, um, but it is one that we have, you know, people are, you can, people are buying those ring lights on Amazon for like 20 bucks now. Again, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it does make a big difference. Um, I'm not saying that I'm not going to tell you that students are going to watch your videos longer if they can see you more, but it is a more pleasant experience all the way around. And so it's the little things that help kind of the long run. Yeah, and then the last one was related to positioning of the laptop. If you're using the built in camera on the laptop, elevate it so that the quality of what we're looking at is, is much better than when you're looking down into that camera when it's placed lower on the desk. Is there an edit function on this? So you, you had the comment, if you make a mistake, just pause the recording and then keep going from there. Is there a way to like splice out a mistake? There is. Um, we're covering that in the later sessions, intermediate and the advanced sessions of council. But yes, there, there is some capability for editing available um, within the My Media when you're look, working with the media on that side of things. Okay. Any other questions that we can cover? So John mentioned this yesterday. We are doing special drop-in hours next week. Um, we are doing them Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday. We're doing it twice a day, 9 to 10.30 a.m. in the morning and 2 to 3.30 p.m. in the afternoons. Um, we kind of wanted to give time that's dedicated to get Kaltura questions answered and help get J-term courses set up. And if you're starting early for a spring course, kind of, and you want it to work on that during the break, helping you figure out what it is that you need to do so that you're, you're able to do that during the break. Um, so we are available. Same link that we've been using all semester long. Um, feel free to drop in at any point during those times to get those questions answered. If you play with things over the weekend and you come armed with lots of questions, we'll be ready to answer them and help you get things up and running. If you have questions about topics that we haven't covered yet, feel free to ask. You know, if we can find the answers for you, we will. If sometimes we might figure it out together with you during the session. 
Um, but yeah, consider coming to those drop-ins next week if, if you want help getting courses set up, especially for J-Term. Okay. Anything else, John? I'm going to stop sharing screen for a sec. And, and if anybody put a question in the chat and I just totally missed you, please feel free to jump in now. You said that you should clear your desktop. And um, I think I'm focusing in on PowerPoint, which is going to be full screen. So they wouldn't see your desktop under that condition. No, when, under that condition, they won't, yeah. When would they see your desktop? If you're demoing and, and you're not working, if you're looking at, like I had to share my desktop today with you oh, so that you okay. could see the actual controls that I needed you to be able to see. Okay. Um, my desktop was a mess and I didn't want you to see that during the session today. Got it. Thank you. Cause I'm never gonna clean my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> the real reason is she clearly knows I'd make fun of her after the session today. Probably, yeah. We're doing pretty good on time, so feel free to jump in with questions. And I know this is one of those things that's easier once you're able to have the recording and then do it kind of side by side and pause and probably mute me more importantly, but pause and play type of thing. I have a question, Qualey. Could you repeat the times 9 to 10.30? 9 noon. to 10.30 and 2 to 3.30. And what days? Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you're going to be available all that time. <laughs> Great. You say that with a question, Helen. Yes, we are. We are committing <laughs> to be available during all those times because okay. we, we know time is short um, because once we're gone for the break, when we come back, J-Term starts. So we just want to make sure that anybody who's teaching in J-Term has access to us to get as much done as possible before we're gone on break. And you're going to publish uh, yesterday and today's uh, recordings, presentations. Yesterday's recordings went out. If you didn't get it, let me know and I'll make sure you get it. But yes, we will also send out today's recording as well. I don't think I got it. Okay. Well, I have another question. Um, Go ahead. The last thing we were using was Illumira and I mm -hmm. had students make short presentations for a particular class. And I'm teaching that same class again this semester. Um, so I, how to just, I know I have to figure out how to do this, but are students gonna be able to uh, do short presentations, video presentations, which they would share uh, similar to the discussions that we have? There is a tool available to them with Kaltura that allows them to do the same kind of recording that they were able to do and sharing that they were able to do with Illumira. So yes, express and caption. And I'll be able to learn that between yep. now and spring. Well, so so the cap the the full blown Kaltura capture will also be available to students as well. Yep. For more, you know, it's kind of like that term project presentation type of thing or or any major presentation. Um, we do plan on linking on the router help desk knowledge base articles that bring them to tutorials on Kaltura's website, so on and so forth. But you also, what's gonna be really cool, and this is gonna, I think we go over this in intermediate, I wanna say, um, there's another product and we touched on it very quickly, both yesterday and today called Express Capture, where kind of the bread and butter of that is if you wanna be doing video discussion boards, um, it won't, it will, you know, you don't have to worry about storage or anything like that anymore. Students won't have to download something on Zoom, get the link from the recording, from the cloud, and then put it back. It's all going to be integrated. Um, so that's going to be a pretty cool thing. Okay. Thank you. A question. You guys are going to hate me for this, and I'm sorry. Um, since we can't have our virtual backgrounds in Kaltura, do you have any recommendations in terms of what you've seen that works well in terms of the background besides not being in front of a window, I guess? Uh. I think our general thing that we've been saying to, to folks, because it's been fascinating to me and Quayle since we've all been remote and how virtual backgrounds have, have become like the most important thing to some folks is teaching. And I don't, we don't say that to be mean. It's just, it's kind of funny because I never thought people would really care about it. 
students. Oh, I care. I don't want you to see my bedroom all day. Yeah. Students definitely don't care about your backgrounds as much as people think. So, you know, kind of plain is better. Um, if you really, you know, and some times I get it, you don't want to have, you don't want students to see what your living room looks like and you have no other room in your house where you can go. We've seen folks use shower curtains mm -hmm. and get decorative and it actually looks pretty good. No, actually faculty member using background to helping them to motivate related to the content. So, I mean, I guess you you guys are comparable record while well, using the Zoom, so you can continue to use the Zoom to record it, right? And then upload it into the Kultura. Editing options limited, but. You guys should follow Room Raider on Twitter and they give you great um, information on, or it's not, room raider it's more specific than that but they, they follow all of the like newscasts and rate when they have guests on what their backgrounds look like so gary you would get a really high score i like the depth um the christmas tree is great sharon yours also with the flowers a very nice touch good job mine i i get like a zero today i'm in my basement but that's okay flowers from my sister's wedding doctored a little bit too look very nice to match thank you so it's something along the lines of room reader you said yeah i'll i'll email it to you i it's it's good it's um a bit partisan so if you're not into politics you might get mad jeb bush made them famous um so you should read about the jeb bush situation but let's see maybe i can find it fast yeah okay so it's rate my skype room that's the actual handle but it's called here's, here's, here's a great thing too, Jamie, is that I think a lot of people believe that what they're seeing is a false background. <laughs> so yeah. even if it's real, like I was in a meeting over the summer and they were raving about my background, I said, no, actually that is the backyard. <laughs> it's like yeah. that's the real thing. So it's uh, it's a weird science. Anything else? Okay, I'll stop the recording.